as I promised in the last session we had, this is the review sheet I was talking about. It contains all the cases from Libsy file. They are in different columns here. The cases are in the column called case description and the case number is here. So basically how I use this was, I listed all the cases in the columns here uh, along with the diagnosis along and the case number. And a few days before the exam, I went through this sheet to find out if there was any particular case which had the diagnosis that I did not know much about. So I would try to recall what would be the presenting complaints and with that diagnosis, what would be the investigations we would do, what would be the management protocol. And if I would feel less confident about any of that, then I would go back to that particular case number and read that particular section, which would save me a lot of time than going through all the cases again and again and reading the things that I already knew. The other thing was I had the chief complaint listed in the column here. So I could organize this according to the chief complaint as well, like shorting A to Z and so on. So this way, the advantage was I could see that the abdominal lump could come with these different presentations and this could be the possible differential diagnosis and the benefit of doing it this way is you become more aware of the different ways BMC can ask you questions about different presenting complaints so that those things come to your mind when you see the case for example this abdominal lump case came in my exam it was a case of triple a and the diameter was 5.5 so i had to explain to the patient what it was what were the important points that i should not have forgotten and what would be the management protocol and because i had done it in this way it was easier for me to remember those points so I have different columns for different important points related to the case. Unfortunately, I could not complete this because um, I still had a lot of things to cover, but still these four columns are complete and these four columns contain the important things that you need for the exam. If anyone else wants to add to the rest of the columns and make it more complete, they are welcome to do so. Just let me know and I can give you the access and then we can make it a more comprehensive review sheet for everyone. So this was the first one that I had made. And the second one was all the physical examination cases that I got from Dr. Riley, from one of my friends. I listed them here along with the tasks that we are supposed to do in case of different cases and the chief complaint. And then I wrote about the system they were related to and the key steps that we had to go through for each of the cases. The reason I did it this way was because most of us already know how to do abdominal examination or how to examine for lymph nodes and how to check for the hepatomegaly or splenomegaly. But the problem that we face in the exam is which of these points we need to include in the in the examination when which points do not need to be included so basically there are two important things here uh, first is make a habit of thinking about the differentials for any presenting complaint and for each differentials try to think of the signs that you get in the patient that you will include in your examination that is one thing and the second thing is if you make a habit of you know looking at the case and chief complaint and then coming up with the key steps during a revision you can see if you would be missing any important points in your actual presentation or not so this way my examination became better and better with practice and i um i stopped forgetting the important things that i was supposed to do in each case so that's this helped me a lot so not just riley's cases i also had the physical examination cases extracted separately from lipsy file so all of these cases here you can see these are from lipsy file you can see the case number as well and i did the same thing here too i found out the chief complaint in each case and then based on that i also created uh, key steps of the examination in some of the cases i have written key points like a special test that you would be doing in a patient presenting with acute abdomen and pitfall like don't forget to check the skin target in a patient complaining of diarrhea and vomiting something like this and again as i said that i could not complete it but this was my intention my intention on intention was to complete it and then use it for revision even though i was not able to complete everything still i used it before my exam a week before my exam to go through all the cases and quickly review all the important points for each cases and this helped me in uh, boosting my confidence before the exam so uh, because i had a very good overview of different presenting complaints their possible differential diagnosis which have already been asked in the exam and the key steps and key points for each of those examination steps my third or uh, fourth resource here is the list of differentials and the investigations you are expected to do in each presenting complaint so you can see here uh, that um 
this actually no, contains not just the differentials it contains the differentials history and investigation so basically if someone comes with the pregnancy what are the questions you will be asking if someone comes with hearing loss what are the questions you'll be asking so this was again this is basically just a differential diagnosis expanded to include the questions that you'll be asking but because i was doing it in different ways it was helping me to you know connect the, the dots between different approaches and in a way i was um, looking at the same thing from different perspectives which i think improves your ability to come up with answers more quickly and be able to see the connection between different presenting complaints and and that way it becomes easier for you to um create a good answer in the exam even if you have never seen that case before so basically it contains um differential diagnosis list contains the list of questions that you need to ask for different presenting complaints and also the investigations you'll be doing for different presenting complaints to rule in a rule out different possible diagnosis um uh, so you can see that some of the uh, rows i have highlighted in yellow because these were the ones where i was missing points or i was making mistakes so this way you can do the same thing you can also highlight the rows uh, which you find more troublesome and then focus on them more so that you become more confident uh the investigation tab is the one that i could not complete in time and i actually did not review this one uh, but basically it contains uh, different kind of investigations you are expected to interpret in the exam like ecg chest x ray with the possible diagnosis that they have asked in the exam and the last thing that i did was uh, with the help of the data i had from lifse file i tried to create this pie chart where you can clearly see that the most commonly asked presenting complaint in our exam is abdominal pain followed by chest pain rash and loss of consciousness now if you ask me how valid this distribution of case is then in my exam i had a case of abdominal pain i had a case of chest pain i had a case of rash and i had a case of loss of consciousness as well so you can see that and if you look carefully almost all of these are the cases that recur from one exam to another exam so what i would say is for any beginners start with the possible difference of diagnosis of this 12, 11 different presenting complaints which have been asked in our exam multiple times make sure you know about all the differentials make sure you know about all the questions you need to ask any relevant family history or past history or the personal history and the investigations that you would normally do when someone presents with these complaints so this way i think your preparation will be more focused for the exam now in addition to this file i used anki quite a lot and i used obsidian mind maps quite a lot i will be talking about those two things in my upcoming videos and if you have any question about anything i mention in this video please please feel free to ask me in the comments thank you